I thought today I'd talk about my um, what I call the Resting Islands project. It's a fine art photography project which was inspired by um, a guy called Tony and Eva, or a couple, Tony and Eva Warwick, who went to Montana um, and photographed all these old buildings that had just been left in the 60s and 70s. Um, and there's so many old barns, crofts, houses around Scotland that are um, just left in a state of decay, but they're ageing gracefully. So um, it's prepared quite a lot of interest in the project. It's actually finished up as a, a small blurb book, um, which is uh, sort of available for limited edition sale. Um, but essentially what it is, it's where I go into an old property and I would just find the property as, as you find it. Um, it hasn't been touched, it's just been left to decay. Um, and there's things like this, there's binoculars and coats hanging up in, on coat hangers, old records and old telephones stuck on tables, chairs in front of televisions that are just falling over. It's wonderful. Um, there's no vandalism, there's no abuse of it, and it's a fantastic area. So I thought I'd talk about why I do it, how I do it, um, and go through the process where the final print product, because um, at the end of the day I'm the sort of photographer that likes to have something to show. Um, either a book or a print. Um, I just hate just seeing stuff left on hard drives to, for nobody else to see or on Flickr that just gets the view. So, um, so in terms of capture, um, fairly traditional in terms of using a digital SLR, the old workhorse, the old Nikon. Um, I don't really care what camera it is as long as it, it does the quality. But equally, I've been using other mediums. Um, good old iPhone, which is now, I think, an accepted format for fine art photography. But more interestingly, um, exhibit B and C, this is a film camera. It's a medium format Holger. It costs about £35. It's actually a toy camera, but there's a whole cult because it actually takes a proper uh, square um, or 645 negative, which is fantastic. Or, using the same film, this is my dad's old camera. He passed away a few years ago. Um, Again, it's a medium format camera. It's older than me. This is 1954, roughly. Uh, hadn't been used for about 40 years. I got it off my mum, brought it home, put a film in it, and the first picture I ever took on it in 40 years was fine. And the, the second frame I ever took on this was a castle down the road, uh, Finari Castle. Um, and that's an image that I've digitized and doing print from. So um, it's amazing. What I love is using a very old technology, then the new technology to get the digitised image, and then again, old technology to print from. As I say, my, my, my interest is really in producing prints, um, either it's a jiggly print, uh, fine art, inkjet print, or um, other print mediums. And my current craze, my um, obsession, is another word, is um, salt printing, which is a technology that was developed by Fox Talbot, Henry Fox Talbot, in 1830-something. Um, and his process, um, using, using salt and silver chemicals, was basically the, the originating format of photography as we know it today for printing. So um, there's a, an interest in going back to that old process. So it's, it's going back to the 1830s, which is quite incredible. Here's a an enlarged positive of the second ever frame I took on my dad's old King Penguin camera. Um, this is about double the size, the original was going to be six by nine centimetres, so I've, I've enlarged it. The next process I do digitally is to enlarge it even further, but to create a negative, and then what that produces is a traditional negative slide, basically, of the castle. And then from that, I can produce a contact print using the, the salt printing process. So what I've now done is I've converted this. I've done my processing to make it look good as a positive. And then using the layer, I can convert that to negative. And then from this, I can run to the printer. To get a subtle tone on a salt print, you have to give it a very contrasting negative. I'm 
this is often the big trial and error process because I, I may go through several negatives to know whether I've got the negative that will give me the right print quality on the final sort print. So it's quite an involved process. It's certainly a long way away from the precision and re repeatability of GT printing, which once you've set up for one print, then you can repeat until, or until you run out of ink, really. Um, and when you're doing a limited edition run of, say, 200 prints for, of GT prints, then you could almost guarantee that within a small tolerance, they're all going to be pretty much the same. This process, every print is going to have its own unique quality. So here we have our negative, which this, the, this paper I've used is actually not brilliant paper, um, but it's good for testing because I can see here I've got some artifacts on here, but I know those artifacts won't translate to the final, the final um, salt print. So, so you can see here we've got our, our negative of Finlaric Castle. And from this we're ready to do a contract print. I've come into my dark room, for want of a better word. Um, it's just a small room without any daylight in it. Um, I'm allowed to have some ambient, um, some ordinary tungsten light bulbs because there's very little UV content so I, I can work in this light. Although I'd normally work darker. I've got my paper, which is an ordinary piece of art paper. Um, it's either Fabiano um, or Somerset papers but there's a variety you can use. I've already sized it, so it's had a, a size solution on there. Um, what I now need to do is take my pre-made salt mix and basically coat this. I'll, this is doing it fairly quickly on this occasion. So you need a good even coat. What I do is I just look to the light to make sure I've got no dry patches and give it another quick coat. Some people use a foam brush, some people use a glass rod. Um, I'm having reasonable success with a good quality wide paintbrush. So that's got my salt solution on there, which now needs to dry. Um, 10-15 minutes or in fact I can leave it longer um, because all I've really got is a piece of paper with a, a salt solution and when I say salt I mean rock salt Ta -da! from the co-op so I, I'm now going to come back in about 15-20 minutes and give it the final coating of the silver nitrate solution I've got my silver solution once this is on the paper with the mixture becomes light sensitive. So that's my silver solution on. I'm going to help the drying process a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is to cover this with a board keep the light out to let that dry and we'll come back in 10 minutes when that's dry. Right, we've had our allotted time and I can see already that the process has darkened the paper where the light's fallen through the negative. So now it's a simple stage of Taking my print, first of all giving it a wash to clean off any residue solution. And that'll be anything from about five, five to ten minutes just in a wash. The next stage is to put it in another solution which is to fix paper to prevent any further coloration of the printed image. 
Now this hasn't come out quite as well as I'd hoped, but you can see the process. But I can see I'm, I've got too much exposure, which probably means I need to redo the negative print from, from the digital printer to give me a bit more detail. So there's a bit of work to do on this one yet. As this dries and fixes, and then you wash and then dry again, this, this will darken with time. Um, although it's it's representative of what we're going to get, it's not as yet completely finished. If you watch this over the next 20-30 minutes, you'll see certain areas will, will become darker. And this outline edge hopefully will go virtually black, or as, as dark brown as it, as it will allow. So that's it. I'm going to leave that back into a wash for a while. And hopefully by tomorrow morning I'll have a nice print. We'll see.